technology screens. Uh, I'm going to be working on a few projects today. So last night I started working on right, back here so you can see both the screen and the um, new invisible coating we're working on. Hold on. All right, so I am going to be starting the process probably uh, next week to start working on using our rear technology because we have rear technology. We never show it off. We show it off sometimes, but not enough. So I'm going to be doing some demonstrations of that luminous black uh, front and rear technology we have on the website. And I have an 80 inch screen downstairs. I just haven't had a chance to get around to it because I've been so busy with the orders and then we got the two new projection screen, motorized projection screens that had to be um, done for a demonstration. So it's been a lot of work. And on top of that, i uh, working on my stand for downstairs. So it's been a pretty a couple hectic days, but um, got all that out of the way. We're gonna start ordering our containers today, supplies, where we need to get the orders for out this Friday. I gotta put my stand on hold. I thought I would have it finished by now, but it's not finished. So that has to be put on hold until we get the customers taken care of. So downstairs, cleaning out the kitchen, getting all that stuff removed out of the way, put it upstairs for the time being, and start ordering the container. So we decided we're just going to do 32 this week. Um, we already got, I think, half of that already completed already. Uh, ship out dates are going to be on Thursday. Anyone who's ordered, you're going to get tracking numbers on Thursday. We'll be shipping out on Friday. Um, if your order hasn't been in by Thursday, probably around 12 o'clock Thursday, then you'll have to be process for next week because that's when we order the next 32 or 72 containers 32 being the minimum 72 being the max all right let me go and uh As usual, you know how I like to start my day. Now keep in mind, when I'm doing a screen that's covering a window, I have to always make sure that the room is fully lit at all times. Because that way, you know what I mean, it shows off the ambulate rejection technology that we have on the screen over here. This is a black 12. That is 135 inch black. That's 130, sorry, 92 inch motorized. That is the wallpaper, which I'm going to be firing off in a few minutes. And that over there is... Uh, some invisible technology we're working on. So, going into my office slash tea room slash theater room and get some things straightened out in here. I love to show up the screen so much, my acoustic. I call somebody back too, I forgot to. I have to start the project on getting rid of that thing has to go. It's too big. It's too big and too bulky. I'm going to do me like a, uh, a portable projection screen, rear projection screen. And I'm using that black technology to do it. I'm just trying to get my area in a little bit more of an ordery fashion. Did I put sugar in my tea or not? I'm not even sure. I'm going to double dose that. I'm just going to open the other room with the battery pack. Go over here in order. Right. So first thing I like to do with the day now we got sunshine. Last couple days it's been a bit cloudy outside, so my hat here. I gotta shave my head this week. Well, I gotta shave my head as soon as I can. But uh usually we get the uh cloudy days. Get cloudy days the last couple of days. Now I get a chance to have some real sunlight in here. This is going to be for my screen over here, which I'm gonna be doing. So my office screen, I have to start working on. I can get that knocked out of the way like in no time at all. I like to show this screen I've had behind me with my window light coming in to show you how much light makes contact with the screen at all times. And ink pen, which I'm always hunting for these. My 
I'm gonna wake this guy up. It's supposed to get a little earlier. It's time to sleep in today. I'm trying to overheat my son. Just for kicks and giggles. I don't think that's really gonna make a difference anyway. Did I put sugar in this? I'm not even sure. Ugh, I didn't put sugar in this nasty. Today. Today's Monday, right? Okay, I'm gonna miss trash day. I got a lot to take out the oh for tomorrow. Pretty sure. Ah, I miss trash day. Darn it. I knew I had something to do this early morning when I got up. Back on it. Okay, whatever. We'll deal with it next week. Alright, so as I said before, I like it when I get the sunny days. Sunny days, I do enjoy because that means I get more light in the environment. Uh, due to the fact that I get the cloudy days, I don't get that much light in here. So I like to show up the screen. We have plenty of light in the environment. The two things I know is that when I do my demonstrations, that if a window is blocked, like one of the things I complain about is projection screens blocking windows. Unfortunately, that's the only place I can put the projection screen in the other room. But I make sure the lights in the environment are very, very bright. So that way, you know, we don't cut any breaks on the screen. Make sure we got the right remote control here. This one. I'm gonna start changing up my batteries on my uh, my uh, remote controls because they've been delaying. See how slow they're coming up? They've been delaying for a bit. And it's not the that's not the projector. Projector has a brand new lamp, and I just replaced that one. That's the one thing I like about the NEC projectors. These particular models, all three of them take the exact same lamp. It's like the Chrissy's, the Chrissy's, the LX400, uh, the LW400, the LW420U, they all take the same lamp, literally. You don't have to figure out exactly what's going to take what, they all take the same lamp. Which I went and just bought, somebody had a bulk of lamps, I just bought all their lamps for that occasion, just in case if one of these things blow out. Some people ask me like, hey, you run your projectors all day, what about the lamp cost? I buy a lot of lamps, these are my backup lamps, right here. Those boxes all down there, there, these are all parts that I need to repair my stuff. Just in case if one of these things have a problem, I can repair them to a certain degree. People think I can actually fix projectors up to a certain degree. The only the ones I know that I use. So I mean, if I'm gonna be using a, a, um, a roll down screen or a motorized screen, I know I'm blocking a ton of ambient light that's coming through my environment, which I do need to show off my screens. So since I had to deal with that because we have the motorized there, I make sure the overheads are on and I change those out for a little bit more of a high power ball. So that way I can have more light in here. And that right there is the invisible coating. I've been talking about that quite some time about this coating we developed that's invisible that we're using this for mapping, projecting mapping. And this will allow us for people that are using this particular program to allow them to be to use their objects in fully lit environments. Every demonstration I saw with somebody trying to display off something, it was always had to be in a dark environment because keep in mind, you're projecting off a surface that's not a projection screen. It doesn't have ambient light rejection capability. It doesn't have the ability to be able to uh, um, mimic or have the ability to be able to produce better contrast. It's just, just how it's going to be. So with the technology we're working on that is invisible, once it makes contact to the surface, it's going to be able to give you better contrast, better white levels, and the ambient light rejection technology, which is needed to display this stuff while you have lights on, especially if you're in a showroom, you can't be in the dark. So that's the coating we're working on. So the beautiful thing about the coating is the fact that you don't have to change the structure. Like, like I said, say if you got a red Mercedes, you have this in your showroom, you use this car strictly for advertising, you can coat this car with it advertised off your car, and when you get done with it, it dissolves in hot water and soap. And you don't have to worry about changing the structure or the color or nothing of it. It just stays exactly the same. It's just the coating on it allows the screen to be able, or the surface, to be able to be turned into an ambient light rejection rejection screen. And that's what I've been talking about like the last couple of days. Now I'm practicing on these big banners. Also, the banners help me out because it teaches me how to hone my skills. It is really hard. Let's say hard to use that, that program, but it does require practice. 
you have to have practice. If you're going to be doing little details like scanning 18 feet across from a room and hitting the side of a coffee cup and scanning an image on top of it, you're going to have to know what you're doing. The hardest one I've seen someone doing, someone scan bushes. I have no idea how they did that, but I know for a fact that you can go in and you can manipulate your sensors and you can bend them where you want them to go. But still, that's pretty hard. I got to do that one next. But until then, I'm practicing. So I consider those to be like a uh, giant coloring book. That's what it is, a, color, a giant digital color book for me. All right, so finally we got a fully lit environment. We got plenty of light coming in, which I love to do this demonstration. The light's coming to the window. Now I'm still working on the side of getting the acoustic blackout cloth at 135 to 150. As I said before, I got a big project coming up this summer. The 135 is being removed off the um, deck. It's gone. I'm getting rid of that. I actually have a screen that I'm going to be building from the ground up from scratch. And it's going to be acquired acoustic. And it's going to be an interesting design on it that will allow me to get back and forth inside behind the wall, to, behind the screen to my speakers to be able to modify them, change them out, whatever I want. Of course, all those blueprints and all those designs come from who? Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You gotta consider the fact that the fast rate that we're developing technology. I mean, keep in mind, like I said, we proved time and time again that even the top screens on the market can't compete with our technology. And we proved that over and over again. Come this summer, we're gonna have that new black technology for outside that's gonna convert anything. I mean, literally anything you spray with this stuff to a high-end projection screen for outdoors. It's going to be fully stretchable. The material, the uh, corn is going to stretch. We need that because it has to be able to be sprayed to an inflatable projection screen. And if you ever use an inflatable projection screen, that thing takes a ton of punishment. You got to be able to ball it up. You got to be able to stretch it out, deflate it, a whole nine yards. It's going to take a lot of punishment. And on top of that, you don't have to have a high power projector to get the screen to activate. Let's get something else on here. Starfield demonstration. I love doing these. Boom. So yeah, this week we're going to start. What well, this week got orders to do. Next week the screens we're going to be developing are going to be all rear projection screens. So we're going to be utilizing a little bit more of the um, the 17s. Like I said, there's two 17s I haven't done yet. I'm sorry, like I said, I've been really, really busy. Um, it's a dark uh, slate, and the other one is the ultra bright, which I am gonna have done. I hadn't even designed the labels for them. Just haven't had the time, they're really, really busy. Phillips, 4K demonstration. Getting that from YouTube. I knew they had some demonstrations under them. Ambient light, that's something we don't worry about. Never. Ain't gotta deal with that nonsense. Look in the environment, look at this. Screen doesn't fade, doesn't wash out. That's acoustic technology we're using right now. Let me turn the sound up on this one. Like I said, fully lit environment. And you see the distance of where my windows sit at from where the screen's at? It's a short distance. Light doesn't have to travel far to make contact with the screen. Ambient light. <laughs> this one does. This, we have three screens that'll work with that particular projector. 
The 17s will work with them. The black ones we have here will definitely work with that projector with no problem. I mean, look at it. Look how much ambient light pours through my window. Look how that screen is hitting up with no problem. And then we have the black silvers. They're designed for it. And that new gray screen paint we developed, that ultra gray, they work with, or they work with uh, those particular projectors with no problem. As a matter of fact, if you go into where they have the ultra gray, you'll notice when you look at that where it says uh, projectors required, there's nothing there. That screen will even work with knockoff projectors. And I mean, really, projectors have a little more higher model of a projector, but it works with like low-end knockoff projectors. And that screen, I think the uh, ultra gray pulled up on a thousand lumens at 22 feet back with a lamp in the center of the screen. I'll post those links below so you can check those out. But as for if you want it in black, this would be the one to go with. Keep in mind, this is a blackout cloth, an acoustic blackout cloth surface. We only have them at 100 inch to 120 inch. Right now, I am working to try to get it at 135 to 150, which I am going to require 135 or 150 uh, in my setup for this summer outside. is an advanced HDR technology that delivers enhanced... Well, we don't have the speakers, but I'll have the speakers this year. I'm not going to buy the speakers, but they'll be outside. They make them weatherproof? Hopefully they do, because I plan to spend a lot of my time outdoors tomorrow, um, next summer. So we have a lot of testing on some new stuff for outdoors. Let's see what else we got here we can play around with. put down paints. I gotta put down paints and screens because it's a physical screen. This is a blackout cloth surface. And I'll show you the angle gain. For those using short throw projectors, there you go. That's the angle gain or what my screen picks up in a fully lit environment. My projector I'm using here is my NEC. That's the NEC projector. That cost me around 180 bucks. That's it. That's how much I paid for my projector. 720p NEC projector. What we got here? Hey, you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time. By then, we'll probably have like... We'll probably have the 135s, 150s. I'm trying, if I can get a 180, a 180 next. You know, so you got plenty of time. And if possible, like I said, I'm working with a few people on basically making this particular um, material into something else. I want to do a 235.1, an acoustic. painting take it out of the box stretch it over your frame you're done that's it okay let's go to uh let me grab something real quick come right back
I'm going to go see if I can find a couple of other places that may have acoustic. This is acoustic screen. So I'm trying to find if we can find other companies that have acoustics right now. This is what we have right now for testing against our product. That's Elite Screens Acoustic Screen. And I think there's a couple other companies that make these screens too also too. So we're just going to do a lot of side-by-sides with acoustic versus acoustic. Hold on a minute. I actually give you in a few minutes, my friend. Let me see a question I was asked. No, no, you're good with 100. Like I said, the 100 inches are 198. We have them on the website right now. This right here is an 80 inch. As you see, I can't go much bigger in here either. It's just a smaller room. So the biggest screen I can pull off in here was around 80 inches. Actually, I'm planning to cut that screen out right there. I'm going to cut all that out, and I'm going to build me another one. That is around a 50 inch. I'm going to turn that into a 50 inch acoustic screen right there. Cut all that out of the frame. Put some lid lights at the bottom. I'm going to get two of them in here. That one I'm actually going to rip out of the frame. I'll do that one live so you can see how I do that. As a matter of fact, let me go order me. Go contact my, uh, my contact and see if I can get a dozen of those in. I should be buying them by the dozen. And because that one, I'm going to rip out the frame and I'm going to basically turn that into this. Now, keep in mind, this stuff, when it comes on, it is it stretches perfectly flat. You know, you, if you have an ultra short though projector, young man over here, older man, I don't know how, how old you may be, but he has an ultra short though projector. If you hit an ultra short though projector against the wall and the screen starts to distort like in little waves, that means your wall is not perfectly flat. You have to have a perfectly flat surface to run an ultra short though. If not, you will get the curves in your screen. When this stuff lays down, it lays as flat as glass. You won't have any wrinkles, any form of creases, nothing in the screen. I had a customer come and he bought one, turned around, came back and bought another one. We're gonna grab uh, this one right here. From Disney. All right, everyone, here's the plan. Remember what we're looking for. I love how Disney just throws stuff in there knowing that you can't record this stuff because you get in trouble. I love how they do that. Now, if you had 100 inches of this elite acoustic screen in your home and your windows are open up like the mine behind you, that's exactly what your screen's going to look like. And if they feel that I'm basically misleading the consumers by doing this, I would be more than happy to do a side-by-side -side demonstration with them to show our technology versus theirs. Everything. We have um, all our screen paints are ultra short though compatible. And the reason why when I test my technology, we're going to come back to this. When I test, you see all these ultra short throws in here? The reason why we know our screen paints are ultra short though compatible because I had to test my projection screens on everything. So you see all those projectors over there. We got another 40 in the basement on a rack. We got portables. All my screens are tested on these projectors. I know what they, how many lumens they can take. I know exactly how much ambient light they can take in. And they definitely work with ultra short throws because downstairs there's nothing but ultra short throws. So pretty much any screen paint you choose. Now, if you want, this is the black technology. This screen paints jet black. This is designed for high contrast capabilities. As I said, white levels are a tad low, but nothing that's going to disrupt your picture quality, as you can see. Some people like them because they have that kind of OLED kind of design to it. But you can't use this with that particular projector that you just talked about. Um, the only screen paint that you can use with that projector is you're going to have to use either the ultra bright gray, which we have an ultra bright gray. You're going to have to use a black silver or you can use the 17's acoustics. That's the only one that I would use with those projectors. Any ultra short though projector, you can use anything. With any, as long as it's name brand. But certain models cannot even be used with those particular three.
So I do know for a fact that this screen right here doesn't cost much. Let's see how you use uh, it. Let's see how you use it right here. Hmm. Can't remember what I'm saying. I'm using Halo white wall. This, there's no wrinkles in the screen. You look at the screen, it's perfectly flat. There's no wrinkles in it. Color blue. Getting that from YouTube. And if you look at the screen, there's no wrinkles in it. At all. See that? I put on a blue screen, you can see. So, no, you're not going to have that problem at all. Uh, we'll look. Okay, we say I use a halo. On a white wall. Dude, you're projecting on a white wall? Man, dude, forget it. You're only getting like, what, 20%, 30% of your projector? That's all you're getting. White screens, you're looking at it right now. White screens can't pull up anything. They don't pull up anything at all. This projector is 3,600 lumens right here. Look at this. If I had your white screen in here, it would wash out in every in any area of this house. It would wash out. It'd be pointless. It's 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 it looks good with the dark. And keep in mind, in the dark, white screen still don't pull up because I've done demonstrations in black environments against that 12 I have sitting there in that room, that 135 inch 12, and we've done that against 11 certified screens, and they still couldn't pull up in the dark environment. White screens don't pull up anything at all. White screens are bottom dollar screens. That's what they are. You know how long a white screen has been around? Keep in mind, look, do your history. White screens have been around since the solid era of movies. That's how old they are. I don't even know why they still use them. That's why it's the cheapest screen to get. Anytime you want to buy a screen, the white screen will be the cheapest. If you go to, and I love when you go to Amazon, and Amazon will have these displays. Even eBay has these displays where they will Photoshop these pictures in there to make you believe that you're going to get that image. They're not going to get that image. They don't even produce, I don't even know why they have white screens outside. It's a, it's a technology, or it's not even a technology. It's a screen that should have been obsoleted 20, 30 years ago. It should have never existed. But there's no way in the world, even with the lights out, you're still not getting what you're supposed to get. And that's an acoustic certified screen by Elite Screens. That screen is white. The color red. Projector can't pick it up. From YouTube. That's why you got to sit there and you got to calibrate your projector. You got to black out all the curtains in your environment. There's no way in the world you could ever use the screen in this kind of environment I'm walking through. It's virtually impossible. This is why you have to sit in the dark. The screen doesn't pick up. Even if you have a projector of 3,600 lumens. I got projectors in here of 7,000 lumens and that thing would hit the side of a white screen. It still wouldn't pick up properly. The color green. Getting that from YouTube. The only thing you're going to pick up on a white screen is high white levels. That's it, because it's a white screen. Like a black screen, a black screen is going to, it's going to produce higher contrast than any other screen because it's black. You see that right there? If this was 120 inch on your wall right now, that's what you're seeing right now. That's what you'll be, you'll be seeing off your screen. I mean, oh heck. It doesn't even, gray screens can't even, or our gray screens don't because they have coded technology, but show you the sample sheets and we got a kitchen drawer full of sample sheets let me show you some of the sample sheets we have here all right i got all the toys here i go to these companies i say what is your best projection screen you we have i got just about everything under under the elite screen i even have their new uh ceiling light projection technology over here too we test against everybody you have to This right here 
is they're new. They have a three. I haven't been to track down a three yet. But that's by Elite Screens. That's a ceiling light rejection two. We have that over here. We have DMP Supernova. We have all this stuff over here that we need to basically do this testing off of. Where's my tape at? So in order for any of my screen paints and projection screens, which I have in my demonstrations, before they can get a label, one of the tests they have to pass is they have to do between 5 to 11 screen certified, which means there's 11 screens against that screen, and we do these color patterns. Which one's going to pull the brighter reds, some blues, and greens? We have to test white levels, contrast levels, the whole nine yards. Now, with these particular screens, I can't. These screens are designed to pull images outside. Outside, I got demonstrations. One of the final tests for the technology, it has to be able to pull an image outside at 13 feet back on a thousand lumens. And it must be able to do that at a 190 degree viewing angle, which means it must produce a star field, and I have to see those stars crystal clear bouncing across the side of that screen before it can earn its label. From the day they are first designed, the first day we design them, they have to go through a three screen certify. So people seeing the tests we put them on, our tests we put our products are, are brutal. We don't do the uh, half and half spotted ambient light controlled environments, none of that stuff right there. There's no point. Why would I put it in an ambient light controlled environment and do the demonstration? Because chances are your environment's not going to be the same as mine. So if we test our ambient light rejection screens outside when we do our tests, then pretty much they'll pass just about anything. Because they can thrive outside, they can thrive inside with no problem. Uh, Seymour AV 1.3. And keep in mind, I know this is going to perform better because, yes, it is a black screen. We've done this on the ultra gray screen, the ultra light screen, the 11 screen certified. The black silver is the 11 screen certified. So, yes. We'll go through all the testing. And mind you, these are screens that are much brighter than my screen. People used to think because the light of the screen, the brighter the color you would pull off. No. No, 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 no. They feed you that nonsense. That's not true. The brighter your screen art means your white levels are too high, and that means your colors are going to wash out, and your contrast level is definitely not going to pick up. That's what that means. Some people really actually, but they tell you that, well, if you get a brighter screen, that means your white levels are going to, white levels are going to be high, yes, but your contrast colors, all oh, that's going to look amazing, look much brighter, more vivid. No, your images are going to wash out. i got to be careful because some of these aren't designed for ultra short throw. This one's not, but... We got a screen in the other room. That's what that's for. So we can pop in here on that screen. So let's go to the color red. There's the color red on my screen. Now this projection projecting screen is designed for long throw. You gotta be careful because some of these will work with short throw, some will work with long throw. I tell people, if you're gonna be doing test demonstrations, read the pamphlets that come with it, and don't the pamphlet, do the research on it. That's what I do with the CL or two, or whatever it was, I'll explain how to do it. All right, so there's the color red, displaying on my screen. And there it is on a four to $5,000 projection screen. Do you know how much I paid for my uh, my uh, my projection screen? The whole thing I paid for it sixty eight dollars, including shipping on eBay. That's what I paid for it. And the paint that I'm using right now, which is our black technology, the twelve, that would cost my customers to paint a screen size of this size one hundred and twenty eight dollars altogether versus a screen that would cost you five grand. And that's that new technology we're working on. That's something else completely different. And then we have it like. Wallpaper, and wallpaper screen over there too. So that's the, that's how much you save. So most of the screens I have sitting out through the house are screens that don't. It didn't cost me any money. I just buy a white screen, coat over top of it, done. That's it. Let's get another sample sheet for this too. I'll see if we get something a little darker. Up. Like I'm going through my sample sheet pile and I'm realizing I can't use half the sample sheets in there because they're not designed for ultra short throw. 
certain screens have to be used with certain uh, setups. So that just tells you right there where you kind of pretty much cut short. If you spend $5,000 for a projection screen, it may not be ultra short though compatible. You can't use it. You have to buy a special screen that does that, which would be that one right there that has that capability. All these are not going to be bothered by it, but that one's designed specially for ultra short throw, which means there's no way in the world on God's green planet they're going to charge you $3,000 for a Dark Star 9 and go, no, no, we'll charge you the same price for this ultra short throw compatible screen too. Now you're going to pay some money for that. You're going to pay extra for that. And they're not going to be using 720p projectors in a demonstration. They're going to be using very high powered projectors, knowing that the projector is going to make up for what the screen is lacking. You're not going to have this kind of ambient light coming through the windows. That's not going to happen. What you're going to have is you're going to have some blinds in the windows. You're going to be shut halfway to push out some light. When you take blinds, you put them on a slant, the light that comes through hits the, hits the slant and goes straight down. It doesn't go outward, but it gives the illusion that there's light coming through. Like I showed you in that demonstration where the guy was actually talking about that particular screen right there. And he said, my blinds are open. I'm like, where in the freak are your blinds open? And then what they'll do is they'll pep out a little light in the environment. Like they'll have a light here, maybe a light over there, and they'll have some condensed lighting over here, maybe on a porch or a painting, something like that, to just show that there's light in the environment. But none of that light will make contact with the screen at all. And if you look at the back of the wall, the back of the wall will always remain dark or shadowy, which I'll show you in a demonstration. This particular screen right here, and not to put the company down, and they can't get mad at me about this because it's true. It's true. When I saw the demonstration that they had with... um. Get my broken code mixed up here. Blue screensaver. Getting that from YouTube. Is now a good time for a flare up? Enough. You can pick up the button. That's face about it. Here you go. Spent five thousand dollars for a projection screen. Mine. This is a Chrissy projector. This is a 1080p projector, 1920 by 1200 W W U X G A at 4300 lumens. And that screen can't pick it up. Look at that on the angle. So I can sit here in my chair. I can see my screen here. And I can see it here. That's the way it's supposed to be. When I sit this office, if I'm watching a movie off the screen, I should be to see it from here. Right now, I think I'm in my software right now. Yeah, that's my software running right now. That's for this right here. Let's go with um, this right here. And I want to look at, at CR2 because I had to look this screen up literally because when I got here, there was no instructions with it or nothing. I'm like, okay, so what does this thing mean? So I went on and because uh, I just went to their, their site and just ordered it. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to order some stuff. Show the online me going to the site. How easy to order the samples. Went online and ordered some samples. And then when I got here, it had nothing with it. I was like, so what is, what am I working with here? Is an ultra short throw compatible? Can I use this with long throw? I didn't want to do the demonstration unless I had an understanding of exactly what I was dealing with. Here you go. So, this is the demonstration right here, and I'll show you how to do the demonstrations, which, like I said, I don't like it because it's not considered to be an ambient light rejection environment. If you're gonna tell people that, what's going off in the back? Let me change this for here. My remote controls already. The color blue. Getting that from 
put you right there. You be there where you need to be at, and I'll stay over here. All right, so this is the projection screen we have in the back. Like I said, I have to research any company I'm going to do business with because I need to know exactly how they do their videos over how we do ours. Now, this is the... Have the space, or don't have room that's dark enough, like over here, then you're going to want to watch this video. Because today in this review, we're going to take a look at Elite Screenings and CLR2. This is a light projection screen that's going to allow you to watch the movies, theater light, even in lead rooms. Let's get right to it. All right, going to bypass the music. And this is to what he says. Now, real quick, if you look at his projector right there, see that big boy projector he's using right there? I guarantee you that is far more powerful than the 720p projector I'm using in my demonstration. As I said before, they use very high-end projectors to make up for what the screen may be lacking. So we all know that's not a 720p outdated projector in, in that environment, right? It rejects light from all areas except the area that you're projecting, where the source is coming from your projector. So this is that's not rocket here. scientist, I'm this telling you. This is my you. living room with the blinds open. Um, I don't have any can lighting. You hear what he just said right there. I don't have any can lighting above my living room with the blinds open. He said with the blinds open. Do you see these blinds right here? You see how they're on a slant, how you can see a little bit of light peeking through? If you take blinds, and we all know how they work, if you shut them tightly, no light comes through. But if you open them up just enough, enough ambient light will come through to make it look like the environment is well lit. And when I guarantee you, if they have them opened up, now if they haven't had opened up fully, you would be to see objects on the opposite side with no problem whatsoever. But what they do is they have them on a slant. So you have a little bit of light pushing through, but any of the ambient light from outside is going to hit the blinds and direct downward, not straight on. It doesn't make a difference if you had the windows open anyway, because if you look at the, where the windows are sitting, the windows are sitting side by side, which means any ambient light would have come through, would have been blocked by that curtain, that curtain, and the rest of the light would have just pushed on forward and it would hit the wall in front of them, not in back of them. See, this is all the stuff that I pick up when I watch these demonstrations on where the ambient light is traveling. At the top, Right here, as you can see how dark it is from here to here, there you go. Um, I don't have any can lighting above, but it's a very well lit room. And you can see the kind of image quality I'm getting from a projector. So this is something that you can implement really easily. No. I'm sorry. So that's what I'm talking about. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Always over embellishing the entire environment. That's not ambient light rejection in any way whatsoever. The windows are supposed to look like that if you're doing ambient light projection. You should be able to see objects out your window. There should be no awnings blocking anything coming in. But you, if you have awnings, you have awnings. But still, if you have awnings, even if you open up your windows and light's coming through, it's going to bypass and come through and make contact with the screen. And if you notice, the screen is here, right? The window is here. The window is here. That's not going to affect the screen. My 126 inch downstairs has a window from this side to that side, which means light is coming in here, and light is coming in here and making contact with the screen. So when you said his blinds were open, like I said, it's a good thing I wasn't on that set. I'd have spit my tea all over the place like, wait a minute. They were, wait, they were closed? They were open the whole time? No, that's not open. Pull them windows up, put them on the opposite side of the studio, and then do that demonstration again. Because that demonstration was not done correctly. Yeah. They were, they were shut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is why we have it here right now. And this is what we're getting. I told you, if you bring your product down here, it's going to go through brutal testing. The testing is not going to be easy. And it's not going to be sweet. And you're going to struggle through it. That's what we expect for you to do. We expect for you to struggle. But if our screens can withstand it, and I can charge far less, then how come you're having this problem? And look at the projector I'm using. And I'm not using no 4K or no 1080p. No high and expensive projector to make the screen look fantastic. I'm using a 720p projector that will cost my customers 180 bucks. Somebody uses 150 bucks. Let's go over to uh, some sky blue. Let's 
Let's go back. Color red. Getting that from YouTube. I messed that one up. I spoke in the middle. Color red. Getting that from YouTube. So we're going to go back because this screen was in the picture and that screen was in the picture. Now, I can't say much about the Seymour AV 1.3. As I said before, I've seen their demonstrations. Their demonstrations are pretty reasonable. But that right there, no, I'm sorry. Color blue. Getting that from YouTube. And we're going to show white levels because I told you I love showing the white levels. White levels, when I look at a screen and I show those white levels and white levels are coming off too high, it's an automatic sign for me telling you, yep, it's going to have a problem. I told you, I can look at a screen, I can call it right from the door by looking at the shade of it. It's going to have a problem here. White screensaver. Getting that from YouTube. Yeah, but they're saying, what the, I had, when I first started doing this, I had somebody come into my room. Look at the white levels on it. Look how bright they are. I mean, of course the colors are going to look amazing. Mm -hmm, sure. Okay. Wait, cancel. Pink screensaver. Trying to pick somebody that use Getting that from YouTube. Something I didn't use already. Yeah, colors are gonna be real vivid. Real, real vivid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is why you have to get keep in mind, like I said, maybe I have too much light in the environment. So what I'm gonna do is because this is an ambient light rejection screen, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna darken the environment a little bit to make it comfortable for the screen. Alright? Now as I said before, in the advertisement, I'm trying to say the advertisement, I'm keep in mind that look. You have to understand, at the end of the day, these screens, I don't know how this one's tested against a white screen. I can't figure that one out. But that one I can see being tested against a white screen. I have a 135-inch elite screen in my, in my other room. I can strap that. And I've already done the demonstration to see exactly. Now, yes, they will show an improvement against a white screen. Definitely going to happen. I, again, I don't know about this one because it's white. But this one will. Any screen that's slightly darker than a white screen is going to show an improvement. So I'm going to show an improvement. That's definitely going to happen. And that's what they're marketing their screens toward because most of the population who's buying screens are buying white screens. Because when you go into places like this, which I'm about to show you, they don't give you those gray screen options. Those particular ones like um, the Dark Star 9, uh, the Parallax, if I'm saying that correctly, these are all my sample sheets right there. Those high-end screens you can't buy from Amazon. You can buy one from eBay if someone has one using their sound, but you have to go to a select dealership to get those particular ones or call in for those, but you're not going to have them. Now, the Great Cinema 5D, say Great Cinema 3D, the Great Cinema, you could buy that off Amazon if they have it in their selection for you to buy. If they don't, then um, you just can't get it. All right, so this is what I'm buying next. This is VivaStorms sample sheets. Yeah, I'm interested in that one the most. That's the one I'm interested in. Six to ten days. Well, I have to like six to ten days. I can't get this rushed overnight, but whatever. Anyway, um, I need to go to... We're going to go with projection screens. This is what happens to most people when I go buy a projection screen. So go on Amazon, I need me a projection screen. That doesn't make a difference which size. Let's go with a projection screen. All right. There we go. And they'll come in here. First time somebody buying a screen. First time coming in here. So they'll come in here to look at the screen and go, wow, look at the image I'm getting off that screen. Because that's what you're thinking. This is the first time buying a screen. So, you know, you don't know. This is what you see. You see this beautiful, bright image. Look how vivid the color looks. It looks amazing. Think, wow, this is going to look really good on my projector. Really good on my projector. And then you start scrolling down. You see all the different, the Photoshop. Well, this is all, I know it's Photoshop of mine because I test these screens all day long. Voila! 135-inch elite screen right there. I test this stuff all along. And this is not one of these unnamed brands. It's an actual name brand screen sitting over there. So this is what you think you're getting. All right. So it just gives you the comparison. I'm putting the company down. I'm not putting the company down anyway. When people get mad over like you put the company down. Well, let me tell you something. You really think you're going to get this from this screen? Seriously, you really think you're going to get deep, dark colors that look like that from that screen? That's what you think you're really going to get? Yeah. You do know that if you have an HD 1080p projector or 4K, you're not supposed to use those on white screens. You know that, right? That's not A, a white screen is not considered to be a 4K screen. It's not. 
It's actually the darker screens that are used for actually 4K applications and 1080p applications. That's why they cost more. That's why when you buy a white screen, a white screen is going to cost you bottom dollar. If you got a fixed frame, maybe like 130 or 120 bucks. This one cost me $180. It was 135 inch. But if you're talking about getting this at 135, well, you're talking about a lot of money. If a five, if a hundred inch is going to cost you three grand to a hundred. Here we go. We got one over here. They got one for 125. This is 125 inches. Look at the price on that. 299 dollars. Two hundred. Oh, sorry, 201.99. So someone looks at that, they think they're going to get that image right there. You're not getting that image at all. Period. That's not going to pop up on your screen. If it did, and this is a white surface, that means the screens we have back there, which are actually gray and one's actually white, could pick up the image just as sharp as this, but it's not doing that. <sighs> they give you the science behind it and washable. Look at, look at the boardroom. Look at this in the boardroom. I love these pictures so much. Look at that in the boardroom. Look how bright that image. Look at the contrast levels that pull up in the boardroom in a fully lit environment. Yeah, that's all Photoshop. That's definitely Photoshop. Look at that. This is what they, they sell you on. Now, for those companies like Elite Screens and all of them, they know this stuff is not going to work in your environment. And that's why they can do those demonstrations side by side because they're testing their privacy against white screens, which majority of most people, when they come in here buy, are going to buy a white screen. Let me see. They have this at 135 inch. 135 inch. Well, they want way too much for that. They want, what, 200 and... Yeah, I paid 180 bucks for mine over there. 135 yeah, I paid it $180 for that one over there. So yeah, that's pretty much what you're getting. And they do the same thing with the uh, the uh, projector. It's the same thing. They put the same Photoshop up there to make it look like, wow, you're going to get this image, fully lit environment, 120 inch massive screen. That projector, the pixel count on those things, are you kidding me? 480 by, I think it's something like 480, no, it's 400 or something about like right, six something. You're not getting that from that. You're not. You're not going to get that at all, period. Look at, this, look, at, look at this. Look at the Photoshop display. Look at that. Look at that. Just remember, when you buy these screens, you're not getting that image at all, period. I don't care what kind of projector you got. You're not picking it up. I actually own, actually, yeah, Silver Ticket. That's my, my 235.1 is a Silver Ticket. And the Elite screens, I have a couple of theirs downstairs, too. I actually own a few of their screens, too. Matter of fact, my screen on my deck is an elite screen that I bought and, and, and painted over top of it. Looks like the one I actually bought, too. But anyway, so that's pretty much what you're going to get. That's it. It's not going to show up the way you think it's going to show up. Even with the lights out, it's not going to show up. It, it, it does even has the ability to pick up a decent image with the lights out. Just keep in mind, you're in your living room and you're going to have to be in the lights out every time you turn on that screen. And you can't use it in the daytime because that's not going to work. So if you have to wait till nighttime to use it and you want to use it in the daytime, then what are you going to do? Turn out all your lights and get some blackout curtains. So pretty much you just turned your living room into a cave. So let's go to, um, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. What do we got? At least green on that car right there. All right, so these are the white screens. Now, let's say if you want to go buy... You want to go buy one of the high-end screens, the ones you're going to need. They're going to give you a much better picture quality. So let's go with the uh, let's go with the Dark Star Nine. You got to go to dealerships for these. Vision Prime. It's called the Vision Prime. It's actually been called the Vision Prime. That's what they're called. Now, there you go. That's the normal price. There you go. This is what we're talking about. This is what you're going to be paying. Depending on what frame you get, price is going to jump. So let's see if we can find the one that we have. Let me see. And we, we've done Elite Dark Star 9s over here. You see that? That's my video right there of me actually uh, testing a Dark Star 9 versus one of our screens. So let me see. Oh, is this the one from... Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to show you something here. I want you to pay attention to this one. I'm going to show you something interesting. Not to put them down in any way, but it's their video. They shot it. I'm analyzing it. I'm going to show you something. Now, this is a Dark Star 9. Right here. We can figure out what we got right here. But they have the price of it. Which one? That's the motorized projection screen. So that wouldn't count. We need a fixed frame. 
Uh, here we go. There's your price tag. This is for a 122 inch. All right. That's 122 inch. If you want those particular screens, you have to go to a dealership that's going to have them, number one. And number two, it is not going to be cheap. It's going to be way, way, way more expensive than their white screens and the Gray Cinema 5 and the Gray Cinema 5 3D because that's a darker screen and darker screens cost more money. Do you have any idea if my technology was tied to Elite screens? Do you have any idea what that screen, my screen would probably end up costing you? A whole lot of money. Way more than probably a black diamond. Which, by the way, yeah. Anyway, so here we go. This is me, my video. All right, this is going to be a very short video. Short I'm not going to hear my voice. First thing first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Illuminous 4K screen paint. So that way you know it's me. There's the Dark Star 9. I tell you, we test everything. We show off the white levels, which we do all the time. That was a technology we developed to be able to blend their screen. This is this is old technology. We don't even make this anymore. And from that technology, we used advanced technology now to make it better than their screens now. See how this screen just disappeared? So from watching their demonstrations and how they test their screens and stuff like that, we learned to make a formula to actually blend into one of their screens. And then after that, once we learned how to blend it in and to figure out how that formula was designed, then we deserve the technology that was completely different than that to make it more advanced. Let's go over to here. Let's come back over to right here. And I'm going to show you this right here. I want you to look at something real carefully. I noticed it. a lot of people don't pick up stuff like this, but I noticed this stuff right offhand because, like I said, I analyzed just about everything. So that right there is the, I think this is, yeah, it's a Dark Star 9. Yeah, Dark Star 9 right there. That's a Dark Star 9. I want you to look at something. There's, there's a flaw that popped up on the screen that I noticed. I'm pretty sure they hope no one saw it, but I did see it. See the lighting that they have over top? That's all control lighting right there. See that right there? That's all control lighting. They have these two little lights here, and they have one there. That's all control lighting. There's not much light hitting the screen, as you can tell from the top right there. It's not enough to disrupt the picture quality. And I bet you they're using some form of ultra sure throw. That's gray. That's not black. We can do that demonstration. We have their sample downstairs on a black screen that produces 100% black contrast level. Now, notice when he puts the white sheet of paper against the screen. See how this? I told you anything's going to be the white screen because, like I said, anything darker than a white screen is going to be the white screen regardless. It's going to be there. But it's not by much of a difference. Now see how he, he gets a bit frantic here because now he starts moving the image up and down. And right here the screen is faded right here. It should, it should not be, it should be pitch black right here. So it's faded here and it's faded all around here. So the floor disappears there. And look at the image he has here. It's actually, the surface he has here is actually producing a much better level. Actually they're almost, almost, almost similar to equal but it's producing a much better level. See that right there? You don't see that. People don't break these videos down. Look at this. See how he moves it? He's moving around. There you go. We saw that. I'm pretty sure I can't get any trouble for playing his voice because it's, it's YouTube. Of that performance, uh, or it's just I'm gonna uh, listen to his voice. How it, how he shudders a bit. Good 
projector, it really comes down to the screen you use. Real quick comparison, if we were putting a matte white up here, you can definitely see how washed out and how milky it would be. So even if you're doing a really good projector, it really comes down to the screen. You have to have that performance uh, or it's just not going to fly with your customers. So, so you stuttered right there for a minute. If you just want to do that demonstration and you want to show an improvement on your screen versus a white surface, you should have been on this side right here, knowing that the dark star now is going to be able to produce a much better contrast level knowing that the screen was darker. Using a white screen against a white surface, your screen would have failed miserably because that white screen would have produced a much higher white level. That was not going to work at all, period. But, but the part I didn't understand is the blues didn't fade much. So even if you're doing a really good projector. That was a big mistake right there. That's a huge big mistake right there. There's no way in the world you're going to put that sample sheet, a white sheet against that particular surface. It's bone white. Of course that's going to pick up an amazing surface. Way better than that one. So yeah, he should have been on this side. That's where he should have been on that side. But keep in mind, this is a TLC black and white demonstration. So it switches back and forth. It'll be black on this side, white on this side. That's why we do these demonstrations on the screen. So we can show the white levels on one side, contrast on the other side. And we take the white sheet of paper and we stick it in the middle. But there's no way in the world, if you put that in front of that screen, it should have faded. Mind you, that's not white. This is a gray, high-performance screen in the middle of our blue screen right here. Get my stand up a little bit. Stand down a little bit, people. Hold on for a minute. There we go. The color green. We're supposed to show a significant difference. Did someone say cheeseburger? I gotta try. We got a Wawa's run. Any of these Wawa's cheeseburger? Sounds good. And that's a gray screen. That's not a white screen. That's a gray screen that's on my screen. If he had done this on a white screen. Like I said, he's not going to do it against another gray screen because it'd be pointless because they test their technology against white screens. Like I said, that part I can understand because that's what they're going against. The majority of people have offices and businesses and stuff like that are going to be using white screens. That's what they're going to be using. You know? That's why I said people don't look at them demonstrations. You have to look at them demonstrations. Anytime somebody does a demonstration, do not get memorized by the screen because then you'll be calling me up saying, hey, look, I bought this screen. The contrast levels don't pop. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. And my projector is so and so and so. It doesn't make a difference if your projector is so and so and so. You're still not going to be able to pick it up. At the end of the day, and like I said, right there, when I saw that, I was like, oh, no, he did not. A lot of people don't see that. They're looking at the screen. They don't realize what they're seeing there. When he took that white piece of paper and he did that, I was like, yeah. That came very close to matching their screen. Very, very close to matching it. There's a little bit. They're picking up a slight better dark, darker blues and stuff like that. They are. They're definitely picking that up. But when he went against the white surface, against a white screen, are you kidding me? Oh, there's no way in the world he's going to be to come against that. Look at this. What is going on here? I'm not going to say much about this, but I already see a, an improvement in one surface, but I'm not going to say anything about it. You pretty much be the judge of it. Mm, there you go. See the black levels? This is supposed to be pitch black. I forgot. I'm sure. Use that. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to run this demonstration back uh, later on tonight. We'll take the Elite Screen Dark Star 9. We'll put it against our screen. We'll turn the lights out. And we'll do that demonstration strictly in the dark. Show you this to make a difference of what you try to throw against. The, the, the problem is when they do these demonstrations, they're in these poorly lit environments. What's this? A Cinema Plus. Do we have a Cinema Plus? Do we have it? We don't. We need to go get it. And I'm still waiting for that one company. I don't know. I don't know if they hear this or not, but man, can you please, please give me my my, uh, my item? Because I ordered the, it's called the Lux, but they call it an L-U- uh, X and I N I. That's what it's called. I ordered that. I still haven't got my merchandise yet, and I'm still waiting for that. So I don't want to go on PayPal and do a charge back on them. I just want the I want the item. So I got to contact them through email again and explain to them like, look, man, it's I mean, good thing I didn't. I, it's good thing I didn't depend on them for a screen physically because yeah, I'd be, I'd be I would be excuse my French lord screwed. That's what I would be, literally. Because there is, there's, it's still waiting. I got my Elite screen samples before them, and I ordered them before Elite, so I don't know. This is their acoustic series. This is not the one I have, but this is their acoustic series. Just setting the screen up. That's pretty easy. We know how to do that. Fire up the projector. Let's see what it looks like with the projector on. There you go. I told you. What did I tell you? I can call it before it even gets here. Ambient light controlled environment. Tire environment's gonna be dark. Pepper light here, pepper light there. And this is someone, this is supposed to be, they're not watching a movie. This is supposed to be someone's living room. Mind you, when you put an ultra short throw in your home, this is gonna be going into a living room or someplace that where that area is designed to be in a lot of light. Let's go with um, my personal favorite I like to go through is ambient light rejection screens. See if you're actually getting what you're paid for. Ambient light rejection. Um, I want to check this out real quick. They had this demonstration they did at a showroom where they were showing off their screens. Here we go. This is my personal favorite right here. I have no idea why. If you're at the CES 2020 award or whatever it is and your environment is this dark, it should never ever be this dark if you're displaying projection screens. But I'll let you check. You can check it for yourself. It should never be that dark. Never be that dark. And mind you, I'm in this environment right here, right? Hold for a minute. Hoping to get these mixed up again. I thought I have them mixed up. No, that's the one in the next room. Why is this here in the beginning? I'm tracking down the remote control that I've seen to have lost again. I'm supposed to try to train myself to keep my remote control in this one section here, and I'm basically messing up badly on this one. Wow. I swear, I set a record for losing remote controls like there is no freaking tomorrow. All right, hold on for a minute. Ken has done it again. Ken has somehow magically lost a remote control in the land of where, what, and how, and who knows why. So I've done it again. I've got cup holders on this chair. I don't know why I'm sticking one in the cup holders. There we go. We found it. One chair again. 4K Fish YouTube. So I'm going to display my fish over here. All right, and we'll get back to this one real quick. I don't take my mechanics to the This is how. And we can go with the uh, 4K animals. That's funny. Let's take out. I just saw something really hilarious on here. That's why. Now keep in mind because I have. It's just it's not that much more calm. A documentary. Okay, here it's not a documentary. 
All right, so as you can see, even though we have the um, projector blocking the window light because it's the only place I can put it at, literally in the environment. Look at it, I have no room. If I wanted to, I should have put it here, but I, put the wall, I can't put the wallpaper there. So that was the only place I can put it at. So since we have it blocking the window, in order to make up for the ambient light in the environment, I actually put in higher voltage light, uh, um, light bulbs to make the environment brighter in here. So you can see how much light we're using in here compared to what I'm about to show you. Can we get something a little bit more energetic than the cats here? There we go. That's much better. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to go over to the side of the screen. So all the light hit it so you can see the light here. It can contact with the screen at all times without close. It's sit next to my uh, screen. Show you the angle. Walk back around here. And this is the 12 technology. Painted on a $68 projection screen. And you can see that with no problem. Now, this is the problem I have in here. Well, not a problem, but it just shows you right from the door. Now, look at the environment. Look how dark it is. So, this is what they do. See these little lights, same LED lights they have right here? These things are the equivalents of having a, one of these lights on your desk for reading. That's pretty much what it is. They have it on one side right here only. It should be from here to here, which you don't have. The light, main lights or heavy lights are behind the back of the screen right here to give off like it's actually giving off light, illuminating the environment. They have condensed lighting right here and here. Chances are the way they're hitting the wall, they probably have the light shifted inward, so that way they hit the back of the wall. Come back here to the very beginning. Look at the light in the hallway. The light in the hallway is literally, it's brighter than the hallway than when you actually walk into the physical room. The physical room is dark. They have over here, ultra short throw. Got a couple ultra short throw. All these are mostly ultra short throw projectors. That's the first display we saw. Come over here. Right there, a little farther back. There we go. We got a screen block and a window right here. And look how dark the environment is. Now my screen blocks the window. But look how much light we have in here. So we have one light here in the corner right here. Guarantee that's on a dimmer because if it was brighter than that, all this would have been illuminated over here. And this is being blocked by a window. I have no idea why you're in a room that dark. And this is not an ultra short though, I'm using a long throw in this demonstration. So, my projector has to travel a distance to ambient light to make contact with the screen. All right. Let's come over here. It's one of the ones they were displaying there. Ultra short throw projector. All the lights are behind the back of the screen. The ceilings are dark, as you can see. They have a little bit of ambient light right there. Look at the corners. All the corners are nice and dark. And this is supposed to be the technology you guys are developing. My goodness, man. Stuff we have now is far more powerful than what you have. What we have next year, we're completely, yeah, like I said, it's gonna pretty much annihilate anything it touches. That sun killer technology, keep in mind, these people are inside hiding away from ambient light. We already have technology we're developing that can take a direct hit from the sun. 
Do you have any idea what that stuff would do to these screens? Let us alone the envi in the environment we're at right now, it's much more brighter. Here's the other screen on display right there. Watch your short though projector. It looks like an LG, the LB. It's the um, Sunbeam, Sunbeam projector, probably 4K. No one wants to make that projector that weird looking like that. There we go, yeah. I do that because I really, really, really get tired of, um, I was seeing those demonstrations. And then the way they talk about it, like, oh, it's well lit, you know, it's ambient light rejection, it's this, that, and the other. This is my technology versus y'all technology. This is my technology testing against all y'all technology in one hit. Every last one of your screens, my screen has challenge. Look at this. It's supposed to look like that. That's what ambient light rejection technology is supposed to look like. These are the environments your screens are supposed to be sitting in. Environments like to see how much light's in this environment. That room is supposed to be super bright. Look at this. This is my environment. With me showing off my screen downstairs in my living room with condensed lighting. That's the screen down in the basement I'm testing. Testing against a white wall to show how my images pick up on our black technology. That's how you're supposed to be testing your work. That environment is supposed to be lit. Look at this. Look how much light enters my environment. That's why I had the 4K projector right there. See when I walk over to my blinds, watch this. When I walk over to my blinds, my blinds are up. Just light actually pushing through on that screen. There you go. That's how you test your screens out. That's how you punish them to make sure they do the job they're supposed to do. You hit them with 200 watt lights on each side, plus the lights over top. When I was doing demonstrations, people were like, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Who does stuff like that? Well, guess what? Three years from now, boom, now we got technology that can be used in fully lit environments. I can walk throughout my entire house and my screens will fire up with no problem because of doing hard tests like this. If you can't back up your work, it's, not, it's just not gonna show. Look at this. My condensed lighting makes contact with the screen at all times. Well, I built a lot of projections. This screen was banging. This was the red screen I built. I told you I built so many screens, so many screens. That was a pretty cool movie screen that was a design right there. See that? That's why I said, anybody wants to sit there and challenge my technology, go back and look at my demonstrations. I got demonstrations that, like I said, that can be scheduled to be challenges. You see how well lit that environment is? You see how bright the reds are? The reds don't even fade. They're about as red as the curtains that I have shown displaying off my screen. You see how the condensed lighting is making contact with the screen at all times? It's not pushed away from it. You don't see any little balls of light in front of my, uh, my screen showing that the light was pushed away. My condensed lighting is actually hitting the screen. The same amount of light that's hitting that fireplace is the same amount of light that's hitting there. That's why I said when people sit there and tell me, yeah, I had a LED light installed over top to add more light on top of the screen. 
Some people sit there and say, oh yeah, well this, that, and the other. Yeah, so you know, I've got enough demonstrations and ambulant rejection technology that literally choke a horse. So anytime somebody wants to sit there and say, oh, I have the same you have, no. You couldn't even touch any of the demonstrations that we do. And that was just a simple demonstration that was displaying the screen that I just designed. Perfect example. See all that light? That's how much light makes contact with that screen every day. And you jokers are sitting in the dark. I'm talking about hobbyists. I'm talking about cut corners and don't do the job correctly. Big corporations that do these peppered out rehearsed environments. And y'all call that ambient light rejection. That's not ambient light rejection at all. It's smoke and mirrors, that's what it is. This is what you're supposed to be looking at. When you want to buy a projection screen, this is the performance you should be looking at. said oh poorly lit environments all the time now that's their screens right there and once we get outside that's it because outside this year i'm planning to dominate when it comes to bathing i'm not I'm, i understand because i will dominate so strong no no i'm it's serious like the technology we're working on for outside screens yeah you think the black screens were nightmares when they're outside being tested on the screens just stuff we're working on right now for this outdoor projection screen yeah, it's going to be pretty much, you can just call it the widow maker, because that's pretty much what it's going to do. It's going to pretty much anything outside, oh yeah, this, this stuff is going to be crazy. And God already gave me the master design on how to develop it, and you don't need a high power projector to trigger it. Paint anything you want, anything you want, anything, 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 anything. Yeah, we're going to do some brick simulations, stucco simulations, all kinds of crazy stuff. We're going to paint all kinds of weird stuff with this stuff. All right, let me see what we got to go here. Let's do some, let's see what we get on outside projection screens. Let's see what comes up. Let's see what we're dealing with. And this is what we're dealing with. White screen, white screen. There's my technology outside. Look at this right here. These are our tests outside on using a 200 lumen projector. This is old technology, mind you, nothing new. This is old. So if you have a white projection screen, you're gonna to have to deal with technology that's gonna be far more advanced than what I'm showing you right here. Look outside. I don't know what we're gonna call this stuff, but we are gonna have packages with it. We're gonna have some pretty nice packages with it. So one of the packages we are gonna have with it, yeah, the screen can pick up high white levels too. It has a cable, this is old, mine, this is the old stuff. The new stuff we have is gonna be better than this. But we're gonna have these big packages. So the packages are gonna come with the uh, screens that we get with the grommets. Um, they're gonna be screen sizes of 300 inches. They're gonna come with two gallons. We're gonna have maybe five gallon kits. These are gonna be like, and you can have the smaller screen. We're gonna have a, a kits for 100 inch, 120 inch designed for you to take them outside. It will come with free waterproof LED lights. So we are going to add those into the box to the kit. Some waterproof LED lights for you. For ya. Let's go over here. So any demonstration I've seen usually involving outside. And yeah, we did test this product. We had this product way back. I told you we had this product way, way, way back. We had it. That's that sample sheet I have downstairs. And that was where in one year ago? Yeah, one year ago. We gave him a challenge to take it outside and he wouldn't do it. So we bought his product and we took it outside. I'll show you a glimpse of what happened. He called himself being as good as one of our black screens. Oh, by the way, we have your product. It's here. It's going to be coming here. We got it shipped and it didn't come too well. I don't know why you're shipping your products in bags. Stop trying to copy us, please. See, our containers that we use are lock containers. And I test my containers. When I buy my containers and I have a video of it, I'll take my containers, fill them up with water, seal them, and then we'll drop them off the side of my balcony. My balcony is 11 feet high up. So if that container shatters on the way down, we don't buy that container. And there's some other tests. 
basically like packing everything up and kicking it down my driveway because we know that's not going to happen to your package anyway, but just in case on my end, I need to see what happens. And we have all that videotaped. That right there is an eight, and there is a uh, Crow's Person Mix right there. So he wouldn't do the demonstration, so we did it for him. Just like the product that's gonna be coming over here in the next couple of days, um, we are going to uh, do some tests on that. I'm gonna run it to the mill. Here we go, outdoor white projection screen. Using only a thousand lumens outside. That's why I said, man, white screens, boy. If your company develops white screens, you got two options. Two options. Well, chances are you can probably just recode all your screens black. That's why that technology is being developed. And anywhere from we're gonna have one quart, we're gonna have two quarts, and then the biggest we're gonna have is anywhere between um, five gallons to ten gallons. Because I got people who have businesses in sense of COVID. They have to figure a way how to basically keep people separated but have these events. Now, like I said, if on my end, and I'm just gonna say it the way it is, I'm sorry if some people take this the wrong way. If you do do an event and it's a crowd, it's basically a spreader and involves a technology, we don't we don't sell to you ever again. That's it. We we're, we're definitely banning you from our from our company. We won't sell you jack net ever again. And do not use our name, don't say our name, nothing. I'm against that altogether. You know, people out there, first responders, I had a conversation in, in life form over this technology right there, over a fellow who threw a rave in his basement, and all these people were in there crowded, neck to neck in there, no mask, no gloves, nothing. And the guy says, oh, stop being a freaking Karen. Well, guess what? You say that to the half a million people that died on U.S. soil about them being Karens, okay? Hmm. And I had a few people get sick from this disease, a couple of family members. So, yeah, excuse me if I take it personally. So, like I said, you know, when we do the outdoors, we're just going to advise people, please use some form of, uh, of uh, safety. And don't have people crowded together, you know what I mean, for events and stuff like that. We're going to beat this thing. We got to be able to work together and use common sense. And there we are in the dark to show you what your white screen is giving you over a black screen. Yeah, even in the dark, the screens fail. Oh, here's the eight. It's a shame we had to discontinue the eights. Discontinue because we couldn't get the product to make them anymore. We had to discontinue. There's my screen outside. It's an eight on my deck right there. We're going to have to do an inflatable screen. That one right there. Oh, this is the smoke. This is right here. See that screen right there? That technology took a direct hit from sunlight. That's the smoke. We first developed, but it doesn't have the name smoke anymore. It has another name attached to it. But that took a direct hit from sunlight. We had somebody who in Dubai was interested in buying that technology from us so they can use it for storefront advertisements. Yeah, it ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna do my last one here. I think I just bought my keyboard. There we go. So this is the Yard Master by Elite Screens. I want to see how the screen reacts. That's the setup for the screen. Of course, it's dark outside, of course. This is not to put them down, but this is going to be our competition this summer. Well, no, it's not going to be competition. I'm sorry, I'm not bragging here, but it's not going to be competition. I mean, come on, it's not. It's just not going to be competition. 
Just as I'm setting the screen up, I'll buy one of these and blast this sucker black. I'm just showing you. Now see how dark it is? All right, just keeps going by. Got the same popcorn machine, that's a nice popcorn machine. There's a projector right there. Everybody's waiting for the moon to fire up. Gotta be in the dark to use that screen. And even in the dark, they don't pull it correctly. Now they think that right there is a good looking screen. And it's not. Nice set up here with my friend. I like that indoor screen, but I wish it was a different color. This is the screen we purchased. We purchased our yard master. There it is right there. That's the yard master. We got one. We bought one. So like I said, when they do the demonstration, and any demonstration we watch, when they do the demonstration, they show they set it up. We already know that already. When they do the demonstration, always has to be done in the dark. Can't fire those screens up, they're not gonna work. And any demonstration you watch, it's the same thing. Oh, Mr. Bird, what's the difference between your screen and their screens? Well, I'll show you. My screen's 180 inches I had outside. Boom shakalaka. There's my black screen outside, and there's me playing the PS4 outside. And there's my time. If I can go back real quick and get the little time right there. There we go. Mr. Bird didn't pause fast enough. We'll do it again. There you go. There's my time. That's my time outside producing a screen that I'm going to sit out here and watch Star Wars on. Now, see, while they set everything up, they have to wait till it gets dark outside in order to produce the image. Because that's the only way the image is going to come up. But even in the dark, the image is not going to come up correctly. It looks good for them because they don't have a higher form of technology standing behind it. They painted half of that technology with my screen, you would see a difference. That's the surface we're gonna give you for free with the kits. So it already has built-in grommets, all that, and we gotta have detailed instructions to coat the surface twice with any form of paint. It doesn't make a difference. It can be brown, purple, green, orange. It doesn't make a difference. The purpose of painting it is so you can basically get the surface to absorb as much paint as possible. Two coats actually does the job. And then you paint over with our stuff. It'll be a little stiff, but after a while, it'll flex. You'll be able to fold it up over and over again the whole nine yards. Now, like I said, if you're having a party, or say you have, you're an event planner, and you want to see my Burton right there, we apologize. And you set up an event. Keep in mind, if there are kids involved, even adults, and they just got finished eating and partying and having fun, now you want to go watch a movie, they're going to have to wait. You're going to have to keep that party going until it gets dark outside because the screen's not going to show up. And by that time, most people, when it starts reaching around 8 and 9 o'clock, they got to go to work the next day, and chances are the kids are probably knocked out and asleep anyway, or pretty, pretty much crazy antsy on sugar. You just want to go home, put them to sleep, so you can go and go to sleep. You're tired. You want to end your day. You've been there all day already. This technology right here will allow the customers, well, the new advanced version of it, will allow our customers to be able to fire up their projector at 6 o'clock. But with the technology working, or oh, actually 6.57 near 7, but with the technology working on, probably around 6 to 5, 5 to 6 we're working on right now. So that means kids can sit there and watch their movies and shows and play their video games while you get a little peace of mind. Basically, probably able to eat your food without worrying about what Junior is up to because I was one of those kids. My mother had to watch me 24-7. I was always doing something crazy. Contrast levels are going to pop, but no problem. You don't have to have an expensive projector. The projector they just showed in that demonstration was probably a three, dollars $4,000 projector. That is a Sony VPO FH30 I'm using outside at 4300 lumens. That projector cost me $300 used. So you can get your dark contrast levels in there with no problem. Let's go over to a little, I'm gonna have over here real quick. 
There we go. I'm gonna watch Star Wars outside. And this is a 180 inch screen. The next screen I'm building outside is gonna be around 200 inches. Probably 200, 250, I'm gonna try to get 250. Depends on how high the balcony is, because it's gonna go all the way up to the top of the balcony. It is going to expand. So it's gonna go all the way up to here, and it's going to expand. It's probably gonna be a little farther here and a little farther there. Now I want something that's not gonna be permanent. I need something that I can clip and roll up and attach to the bridge. And the reason why is because, like I said, at nighttime, I have interesting creatures in my yard and especially the skunks like to spray on everything. I'll let y'all watch that. Viewing angle, I'm walking on a swing. You move all the way on the angle, this thing can pick up. But no problem. It's supposed to be when you display a screen from corner to corner, it's supposed to remain dark. None of this is supposed to be faded out or washed out anywhere in the screen. You think that looks insane in the morning or in the, in the evening? At nighttime, it looks crazy. I'll show you one. I'm not going to have it here, I'm not sure. We have the 150 inch outside. Oh, that's when I had the 200 inch screen in my home. That screen was massively huge. That was the biggest screen I ever put in my house. Never doing that crap again. It was just too big. 20 inches is way too big. There we go. That's one of my screens outside. This is the same, same, same surface, same material we coated. And that's the one we're going to give away for free with our kits. That's a frame I made for my grommet screen. Cost me next to nothing. Blinds, watch this. When you display your blinds, they're supposed to be open. You're supposed to see objects on the other side. It's supposed to be fully, the blinds are supposed to be fully like this. The way light is passing through the screen. You should be able to see the corner of the house. When you're looking at somebody's blinds, you should be able to see the corner of the house or objects outside. If the blinds are fully extended. Oh, this is one too, right quick. What's the difference between our screen paint and everyday black paint? Well, here you go. Number one, our screen paint on our black paint is a different shade. Oh, we did these tests already. We had to do these tests. 
know why these tests have to be done? Because if I'm doing business with a company, a company goes, well, what's the difference between me going out and just buying some everyday black paint and doing the same thing you got? Well, the problem is black paint can't pull white levels and there's no coating. It's just everyday black paint. That's all it is. So, we have to do those demonstrations. Like I said, I'm thorough about my tests. I do everything. So, on this side, we have our Illuminus 8 on this side right here. Black, black, black. And when somebody says, oh, but um, black, that's not black. You know how many shades of black, black comes in? Go into Home Depot and load and say, hey, let me get some black paint. I'm like, what shade do you want? Yeah, it comes in different shades. And like I said before, we mix and color our own different forms. So we know exactly, we color, we have special coatings, which means our black doesn't look like everybody else's black. That's how we know. That keeps people from doing dumb stuff. So right here, I'll show you the demonstration. That's our technology right there. And that right there is everyday black house paint. Let's see what happens. If you basically, basically try to paint your screen, keep in mind, contrast levels are gonna show up with no problem. There's the contrast levels right there. Contrast levels on the black paint. Contrast levels on the black paint. Now, let's go switch over to some white levels and see what happens. That's what happens. Black paint does not have the ability to pick up a white level. It's a pigma. You know, it's a pigma, like a, like a black dye, kind of like they drop into a white to make it really dark. There's no ambient light rejection technology behind it. There's no coating behind it. It is just everyday black paint. That right there is our technology. So you paint your wall that color, this is what you're gonna get. It's paint, that's all it is. This is coating technology. That's why our cream is showing a different, a different color, better white levels. There you go. We have to do all these tests. There's no way in the world a company's going to give me like ten or twenty thousand dollars, or maybe seven or eight grand, or five grand, or three grand. If they say, "Hey, what's the point of us spending the money for your product?" We can just go to Home Depot and Lowe's and just buy some black paint and get the same results. So, can you show me a difference before we give you that money? There you go. And that video right there landed me 20 grand in one day in my account. Because we're able to back it up. You see the difference in this? Let me look at the video carefully. You know a certain individual has a habit of doing fake videos of our product saying that it's black paint. You see how dark it comes up on here? It actually comes up the same shade of color it does in his video. Uh, there you go. Yeah, because he was mixing black paint in, printing out our label and say, hey, I got this from a customer, do a fake unboxing. That's how the product looks. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? Isn't that interesting? The same way, doesn't it? Look at this. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That surface that he's showing off in this video, it is what it is. It's everyday black paint. That's what it is. Very dishonest person. I don't know how in the world people do business with this individual. If he does dishonest demonstrations like that but i guarantee you one thing my friend when your product gets here we're not going to do anything like that whatsoever we're going to put your screen to the exact same testing my screens go through fully lit environment test against different forms of projectors how your screen stacks up against that 135 inch elite screen over there next to all those sample sheets over there we're going to take you outside we're going to do the whole nine yards all of the demonstrations that you've been skipping we're going to do them here. Color level demonstrations, and guess what? Contrast demonstrations. You're definitely going to do contrast demonstrations. A lot of them. Because I don't see how in the world you can have such a powerful projector and you just refuses to do that star field demonstration. I don't know what it is, but you're going to have to do it now when you get over here. Because we did give you plenty of time. I gave you that challenge, I gave that challenge what, weeks ago? About weeks ago, last month. You know, 
this one again that challenge last month. So you should have been had that one done already. You had the opportunity and permission from us to make any of the exotics. You didn't make one of them, didn't do any of the testing, nothing, which basically proves the fact that you could never make our product even if you tried. We gave you permission and you still didn't do it. We gave you challenges that every morning I got up, I go pull my curtains back, I display my images right on the screen with no problem. I show my customers white levels, I show them contrast color. You haven't done any contrast demonstrations yet. And if you do one, it's probably in a really dark environment, which we need to see those curtains and shades all the way up. Because you're all too short though, she'd be to pull it off with a two million to one contrast with no problem. But like I said, we have it coming in. Oh, and by the way, when the package gets here, I got pictures of it already. He did ship it in one of those shipping bags. Um, he didn't do a really good job packaging it up, so it leaked. Some of it leaked out, but the guy who has it is basically going to let it dry a little bit on the inside, so it seals it, put it in a plastic bag, and he's going to put it in a box and ship it to us so we don't have any more problems with it. When it gets here, you'll see what, what we have, but we do have the address. And I want to explain something to you real quick. We know it's not your exact address. We know it's somebody else's, but it doesn't make a difference. As long as we have some place to send that letter to. And when that letter reaches there, I guarantee you that they're gonna make sure you get that letter because if you don't respond back in a certain amount of time, then things get really, really messy. So I would suggest making sure that you get your hands on that letter, reading through it, and then contacting an attorney. Or we hadn't forgot about that. So with that being said, oh, I forgot to show you something really quick. Cause I think he was being slick. We know where he lives at. I've seen this house before. I know darn well on that address when we did a Google search on it, it's not his address. So he calls himself being slick by changing his address. And he's doing that for everybody. Because he had no way of knowing that the person who placed the order was who or she said they were because the order would have been canceled automatically from the door. If he would have got wind that that was from us, it would have been canceled. So he changed his address altogether for everybody. But keep in mind is whoever the person is that is accepting that, allowing you to use their address We'll get that letter and they will contact you. Trust me. And if they don't, if you don't reach and you don't respond back to it, then it means bottom line is, yeah, it, things, like I said, things are going to get messy for you. All right, there we go. But now this project has to be put on hold because I have to go upstairs and I got to order my containers. And we have 32 containers we're going to do for this Friday. Also, to thank you all for the support. Have, a lot of people came in and placed orders in. So we're going to see how many containers we have left over from um, before Thursday hit. So two things can happen. Either we deplete the 32 or basically the ship out date goes into effect on, I think, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock um, Thursday. So when we, let, we, st we stop taking um, orders in and those orders will be paused for next week and tracking numbers will all go out around that time. All right. So you can see right now the stand right here almost done. All this right here real quick, off topic, this is glow in the dark right here. And then I gotta get the silicone to push out through here on the EL wire so it spills out from the side. So it's a bit of a process, but it's coming on quite well. A little bit more work, I just ran out of paint. But right now, this has gotta be moved someplace else. Projectors gotta be moved someplace else because I need to put my containers in here, which means I gotta get online right now to order my containers and start getting you guys set up for Friday. All right, with that being said, thank you all for your time. I have to go, and God bless.